I'd like to welcome to the show, Abby Humphreys. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. Wonderful. I'm excited for you to join me today. Um, so we got to know Abby a little bit on the show, 20 Somethings Austin, your first trip into the world of Netflix reality. But recently you were on Netflix's Perfect Match. How did that come about? And was there any hesitation on your part to do another reality show? So as far as how it came about, I we finished filming 20 Somethings in like the end of November of 2021. And um, like three days later, we were in hotels. They like kept us uh, to do some interviews after the show wrapped. And I got a call from like the head of Unscripted at Netflix. I'm like, oh my God. I was actually with Adam from my show. We were like on, on a rooftop of the hotel. And I'm like walk, pacing around and they're talking. They're like asking me if I want to join the show. And we had just finished filming. So I was like, oh my God, like you're telling me in two months, I'm going to have to go do it again. Um, and I didn't, I didn't give them a firm yes at that point because I wasn't sure. And they didn't tell me immediately exactly the premise of the show. It was just like, would you want to do something with Netflix again? And I was like, maybe, let me see how this one comes out. <laughs> like, hang on. And then after it came out, there was a, a while where I was like, I don't think I'm going to do it. This is too stressful. I don't like being in the public eye. I don't like people, you know, commenting on every single thing about me, my personality, my appearance, you know, whatever. Um, but after it kind of, 2017 had kind of died down a little bit. And I was like, honestly, like, it was kind of fun. Like, you know, you kind of start to like rethink. You're like, wait, that was fun. Like forget all the bad. I'm very like rose colored glasses. Um, so I agreed to do it. And um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a very different experience in 20 somethings, but yeah, it was a whirlwind one show to the next within like three months. It's funny when I talk to people about the show and very different people like that were on the show, it's like, you know, you had somebody like Bartiz, he had just gotten off Love is Blind, Love is Blind hadn't even aired yet. You know what I mean? And then just other people were like, I, people forget how long ago this was filmed. So it's mm -hmm. like, it, it was like a year ago, you know what I mean? You guys are down there a year ago and it's like, that's so long to kind of be in a bubble kind of per se in some aspects, but um, all right. So you get the call, you say yes, you arrive at Panama City, kind of what happened next? Well, first I, I was a little confused because I was just like, okay, you're going to come to Panama, here's your flight. That's it. That's all we got. I was like, okay, cool. My mom, I think was worried, texting me like, where I was going to get like sex traffic. She's like, are you sure you're talking to Netflix? Because we just showed up at these hotels. I was like, hey. Um, but they had people there to greet us. I was like, okay. I'm like texting my mom. Like, I promise I'm alive. Um, they had people there to greet us. And they kind of just like let us up to our room. And then the next day we had like a media, like the the those gifts that we have where we're like, you know, um, we did that shoot. And then for like a couple of weeks, we were just in hotels, you know, like we were just hanging. Like, um, that's the experience everyone else had like after we talked about it but like I was just by myself I didn't know what was going on we did have our phone at that point so I was just like a little iPad baby like on my phone screen time 18 hours a day like absolutely it was they did let us obviously let us leave the room some like we weren't completely like in prison uh, but it actually did give prison because we would have like outside time and gym time and like but then other than that we we're just kind of like sitting around and waiting um I don't know it felt like it just was weird. It felt like quarantine. It felt like um, the beginning of, of 2020. It was a weird experience. And what's what's crazy enough about that is, is like you had the like one of the longest waits of anyone on the show. Yeah. Um, I know. You know, you fast forward all the way to episode eight when we meet you. Now, obviously, I don't know what that time frame was like non being on the show. But obviously you're at, and we go fast forward to episode eight. and You're put on to the date, the date with Francesca. What was that phone call like? Behind, like, what was that call like? Where were you like, just, you know, what was the call like whenever you're like, hey, you're going on a date with blah, blah, blah. Did you know who you're going on a date with or anything like that? No, not at all. Um, we, I knew that at some point we were going to get called in because we had like handlers, like people who would like take us to do things or whatever. Um, and so they would talk to us like, yeah, it'll happen eventually, it'll happen eventually. They couldn't really tell us much, but they were like making sure we didn't lose hope. Like, because it's like, <laughs> you know, like I'm here to do something. I'm down with this like free vacation in Panama, but also like, you know, are, am I going to even go on the show at all? Um, and then, yeah, they just like randomly were like, Hey, you have a date today. They didn't tell us ahead of time who we were going on a date with. So yeah, I was 1 billion percent shocked when it was Francesca. It's like, Oh my God, like, you're like one of the only Netflix people that I know and that I have a crush on. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Just completely sober cameras everywhere. Meeting my celebrity. Like it was just jarring hotel and then all of a sudden this it was a 
weird day. Certainly, uh, you're kind of held, like I said, not the greatest word, but held kind of captive for a long a time, and then you're just like <laughs> taken out into the. It's like, hey, surprise! You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, that's, yes. So Very obviously, much. the date goes well, um, mm -hmm. and of course, the match was kind of short-lived after kind of a wild chain of events through some partying. One of the things that I thought about you on this show is when you watch Abby, right? You know what I mean? When I'm watching you on the show, I personally felt like you were genuinely looking for a match and willing to explore the show for what it was. Is that the case? Definitely. I mean, I do think, I don't think anyone there necessarily was like, I'm going on here for clout. Although like, I know Francesca has been saying, you know, like it was for my swimsuit line. I don't think that's 100% true. I don't think Obviously, there's an element of that. You're like, oh, I'm going to get some exposure. But I also think that, like, I did take it seriously. I do think that, like, at this point, I'm, like, ready to date. And I do, like, the people that I've talked to in the Netflix universe, obviously, we have some things in common. We're all, like, clearly willing to be a part of these sorts of things. Like, there is a threat, a personality thread across all of us that is similar, you know? So it's, like, it's not so far-fetched to say that we could fall in love with each other. It happens. You know, Bachelor Nation, they do it all the time. Like they have these really long-term married couples with kids. So like, I don't know, I was a very much open to the whole experiment. I definitely like, I think it could have worked. I think they're, they're obviously none of the couples are together anymore. But like, I don't think it's like that far-fetched of an idea, no. I agree. And it's, it's crazy because you watch these shows and a lot of them are always like, most of the people don't end up together or, you know, it's stuff like yeah. that. But it's like, it, I've always was raised on like, you take a shot. You know what I mean? Like, right. what do you really have to lose? Obviously my shot is like not in front of like, you know, the number one rated show on TV. You know what I mean? Obviously much different, but I, I do agree with that. So that being said, um, first off, it's not just like my question to you, obviously you come in at episode eight for the, for the world. So what's it like watching the show back leading up to you being on there and then what's it like watching yourself on the show leading up to actually I I didn't watch the show until all the episodes had dropped because I was so anxious about the editing because of my first show not to not to say anything crazy here but what actually happened and what was portrayed were so different that it's almost like confusing because your memories start to get jumbled because the reality and the presentation are so different timeline wise and they completely changed the story you know so I like I didn't watch it because I was scared like, I didn't want to get in my own head whatever um after the show came out I watched my part saw that it came out realistically and truthfully I decided to go back and watch what like the whole episode the whole show rather um it was so good I like I for I didn't know that all of this happened because my friends told me obviously some of the stuff but I hadn't made all the connections as to who matched with who and kind of the drama the tea whatever I was I watched that shit in like one night since like 6 a.m I was like this is so good like even if I were not a participant I would be eating this up like it was so interesting to see how everybody like met and got along and whatever and then watching myself obviously there were moments where I was like like damn you were too vulnerable or you know whatever like but I do think genuinely something about the production for this show, they really did seem to stay very true to our actual storylines. Like, I didn't see anything. Obviously, there's some moments where there are things left out and things that are like kind of frank and biting where they like edit things together to make things, you know, make sense storyline wise. But it wasn't, you know, very far off from what really happened. Like we they really kind of let us take the lead. Like there was not a lot of production kind of butting in and being like, hey, do this. Hey, do that. They let us just like that dumpster fire, all of that crazy stuff that happened. That was us. That was all us. We really, we really, they didn't need to. We started drama all on our own, you know? Um, yeah, watching exactly. Watching back, I think, was, was a satisfying experience. I was not upset with how it came out. Yeah, because you hear a lot about it and it's not to dive too deep into that, but it's like you hear a lot about the editing and obviously like people on the outside looking in, not you guys, but the outside looking in, don't realize you guys mm -hmm. film a lot. You know what I mean? You guys film a lot. And then of course they have to edit it down to this, this part. But then of course there's the obviously, you know, you don't want to look a certain way that maybe you're not and stuff like that. You are yeah. still a human. And like you said, an edit cannot just hurt you as a person, but it can make you look bad on the internet. And then you get the bad comments and, and yeah, the backlash. Hard. I'm um, honestly, that, the 
people perceiving you as something that you do not feel is the truth of your character is difficult. Like if I actually was a piece of shit and I came across like a piece of shit, obviously, you know, okay, you know, I'm the villain. I played the villain, but people hitting you with so many like character judgments and that's difficult. It's hard. Like even the people right now who are going through like the villain edit or like, you know, all of the drama, God, I just feel like there's so much, so many people sending hate towards just, a, just, a, you know, one person. That's hard on a human being. Like you can say whatever you want about you put yourself out there. Like you did this to yourself. Sure. Maybe. But like, that doesn't mean you deserve the vitriol of like 5 million people. Like that's just, it's a lot. I don't know. I feel very strongly about this because it's happened to me before, but. No, and rightfully so. I, I, I think this is like, it's an important topic to tackle, especially with somebody that has lived both sides of it now. You live yeah. the bad side of it. Now you're like- Now I'm like, having such a nice time. Everyone's so nice <laughs> to me. But it's like, y'all were mean to me a year ago. I, I know it's different people. I kept receipts. Like, <laughs> it's difficult. Either way, it's difficult. Everyone assigning judgment to you based on very a very small portion of your life. It's just a weird experience. Either way, I don't know. Yeah, because it, like I said, I mean, I, obviously as somebody that like you binge watched it, I mean, I watched this a few months, I probably watched this in January, I think it was, um, but I watched it and I binged, I mean, I couldn't stop watching. Like you just can't stop watching. And you yeah. come up with, one of the things that I've, I've loved about getting to know people that have been on these shows, right? You know what I mean? I'm talking to you and we talked a little bit off the air, but I talked to a few other people. It's like, you have to remember the human element, right? Right. Mm -hmm. it is a tv show it is real life things happening but you guys are human you know what i mean you guys have feelings outside of what we see on television and you guys have no everyday lives it's just like oh i was on netflix now i'm the biggest you know whatever you know what i mean you still have your everyday lives that you guys are living and you know sometimes you do things that we're not proud of sometimes right. i do that mine aren't just put in front of tv in front of millions mm -hmm. of people to see so i think it's important to have that fluid conversation to remind people hey Abby is a human, you know what I mean? She's going to make mistakes and maybe she'll make them in front of millions of people, but right. you know, think well, about that before you get on the keyboard, you know what I mean? I, but I think that's why people react so strongly to certain things is because they've had certain experiences and you on their screen in that moment represent experiences. So like certain things that I did on 20 something or certain things that me calling Bartiz out on Perfect Match that people reacted positively to that because they've had experiences in which they were arguing with a guy and he turned something around on them, but it's still the same concept, whether it's negative or positive, it's people assigning things because it's their own, their own experience, but it may not be mine or it may not, it may not technically relate, but it's just, I think that's human nature. It's just hard to be on the receiving end. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not easy. Um, being on the receiving of the hate consistently. You know, we all have tough skin to a point. You know what I mean? Like it's to <laughs> well, a I'm point. sensitive. <laughs> I don't even claim, I, which is stupid. Putting myself out no. there and I'm not sensitive. <laughs> stupid. Been well, it makes, me, it makes me happy that this experience was better for you. So you didn't have twice the, the bad. Thank yeah, God. that was I'm like, can I tell you? I don't know if we'd be talking right now if it was a bad experience. I'd probably be like social media cleanse, like move to <laughs> move to Costa Rica, like kind of thing. Uh, exactly. One of the things I love to find out about um, the person, you know, the person, Abby, the person. What's something that you learned about yourself on your time throughout Perfect Match? Actually, that's a that's a good question. I most places that I go, I am like the big personality, like. Some would say too much, you know, like I, I talk a lot. I'm very like vocal, very expressive. Um, the funny thing is you put me in a room with 23 other reality stars. I'm calmer than I'm like the calm one. Like I thought I was big till I met huge. So I met Joey Sasso and like Chloe Veach and, and Carousel. Like these are people with enormous personalities. Like I, I kind of, you know, you get like, um, like it's relative. I'm a big, I'm a big personality in a group of, of like, you know, classmates or whatever. I'm a pretty chill person <laughs> in this world. It was just interesting to get some perspective because I've never been the calm one or the chill one. People describe me that way. Like, she's so chill. No one has ever said that about me in my entire life. It's just, it's all relative. <laughs> 
I love that. Yeah, it's it's something uh, unique to find. Yeah, you're right because it's like you what these are larger than life personalities. You know what I mean? Like some of these oh people, God. you know, it's and it's not a bad like you're not. It's no, right, I'm not saying that. It's a great thing. It's like all. a. It's like you know, I I'm the same way. Like I like being in. A, I'm different. I'm opposite. I like being in a bubble. You know what I mean? I like being the yeah. quiet person in the. But it's like I love watching people like you and like big personalities light up a room because it's different. But it's funny that you say that you're like that because you're right. Like when I watch you on this show, it's like, no, like you are like, know. you know. Calm. <laughs> That's so funny. I am it, not a calm person. That's <laughs> hilarious. Um, speaking of the show, you you know, we go on the shows, you make, is there anybody that you keep fluent contact with still? Like, are oh you, God, you become yeah, friends that? with and stuff like that? I made an Instagram post like with a caption. It's uh, the prize that we, the real prize was the friends we made along the way. And it's like cheeky, but that's true. Some of the people, like I said, you meet all of these people with a common thread of personality. You're destined to be friends. Like there's almost no one on the show that I don't like at least swipe up on their story or like, you know, ask them how they're doing. But then there's like kind of the more core people that I'm still like, um, I would say like Inez, I loved Inez immediately. We got along really well. I love Chloe. I love, I still talk to Francesca. I still, you know, like I'm still good with most people. Uh, Nick lives in Austin. I just hung out with him like two days ago. You know, we really kind of became a little family, like a weird incestuous family, but like a, like now there's mom and dad are fighting, but it's, it's a good, it's a, that was so wonderful getting along with everybody right off the bat. It was, it was so fun honestly I didn't expect everyone to be that nice I was kind of worried they were gonna be like clicky and kind of mean to me because I was like the little man like I had like 70,000 followers and like did anyone watch my show and they were so <laughs> nice like wonderful yeah. it was wonderful yeah it's the big fish small pond scenario you know what I mean and it's like you get in there and you're like oh it's just it's just poor little Abby you know what I mean like, <laughs> <laughs> no not poor little Abby I just was like no one knew no, my what although yeah. Georgia Georgia had watched me she was like oh my god I was like you're literally Georgia and you know who I am like right exactly I love yeah. that I love that though it's it's in some aspects that kind of keeps you grounded you know what I'm saying like at the same time you know what I yeah. mean like because you some of these some individuals can get in a bubble because of mm -hmm. stuff like this and I love that I love that about you um all right so my last question to you is what are you working on now what's ahead for Abby um in the future um well after we finished filming I had an existential crisis and re-enrolled in grad school. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing, um, studying international relations at University of San Diego. Um, so that's really what I'm working on. Like I'm not, I don't really have any like big reality TV projects or anything. Um, I do love content creation. I think that's probably where I'm aiming myself some in the future. I love like making TikToks. I love, you know, using Instagram. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it was like a fun experience. I'm not saying like, this is the end of like me on TV or whatever, but I like school. I like academia. That's kind of where I'm like aiming myself, but yeah, kind of content creation in school. That's, that's me. I love that. You know, and you know what, I do have one question left for you. It's the question that I'm on the hunt for and I've, I've seen it and kind of answered a little bit earlier. The idea of finding love or your perfect match. Do you think it can happen on a reality show? This is a, like a nuanced question because I think that even if they brought someone on that, like I would, because I'm pretty picky personality wise with who I date with that extra pressure. And you don't know the other person's motives and you don't know kind of what's going on. You don't know if the produ if production is involved and what's going on and just the care. If there's so much pressure, even with Francesca, I think partially part of why I pulled away is, is just so much pressure. This is a person that I had a crush on outside of, you know, it was, terrifying anxiety I was so drunk the first night because I was so anxious not a good coping mechanism you know it is what it is um but on the other side of that people do it like I said there's bachelor couples there's even like a few Netflix couples that have lasted that are, they have kids they're married you know I don't think I think if you if it really is the right person then yes it is possible but with the pressure of knowing that you're going to get edited, knowing that the world is going to form an opinion on every word out of your mouth, cameras everywhere, you don't know what's going on with them. 
yeah, I think it's a little bit more difficult, but I'm not, I don't think it's impossible by any means. I like that answer. I like that. I was, I love asking it because, you know, you obviously have been in that position. So it's definitely interesting to get that answer. Um, where can people find you on social media? All of my ats on everything is abby.freeze because Humphreys, although I do think people think my last name is Freeze. So maybe I should change that. It's just been Abby Freeze for like 10 years. I just don't feel like changing it, but my last name is Humphreys. Humphreys. So Abby Freeze. 